What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Lenovo Tab P11 Plus. Now on the channel we've taken a look at the Lenovo P11, the P11 Pro, and to tell you the truth I had no clue that they had a Plus model, but on paper versus the price this actually looks like a decent little tablet. Now it's not the top of the line tablet like the Samsung Galaxy S7 or the S7 Plus, but it's a much less expensive tablet. Now the base model of the P11 Plus with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage storage comes in at $250. You can get this up to 128 gigabytes of storage and 6 gigabytes of RAM, but with all of these models you can add up to a 1 terabyte micro SD card, so I actually chose to get the lowest end model, 64 gigabytes of storage and 4 gigs of RAM. Each one of these does come with a 20 watt wall charger and a USB type C cable for charging and sync, but uh, overall I've had a couple days to mess around with this tablet. And it's actually a great performer given its price tag. Now if we take a look at other tablets and iPads on the market, they can get quite expensive. I mean, up in the $1,200 range for the high-end stuff. And when it comes to the lower end, no name $99 tablets that you find on eBay, Amazon, and Wish.com, they're probably never going to receive any more updates. Now if you're looking for a good cheap tablet in the 10 inch range, I would highly recommend the new 2021 Amazon Fire HD 10. But remember, it has Fire OS. You can always install Google Play on it. I've done several videos. I'll leave a link to those in the description in case you're interested in checking them out, but when it comes to the new Tab P11 Plus, it does have more to offer than the Amazon Fire tablets. Because when it comes to the specs of the Tab P11 Plus for the CPU, it's using the MediaTek G90T. This is an 8-core CPU. We have two A76 cores at 2 GHz and six A55 cores at 2 GHz. You can get this up to 6 GB of RAM, but remember the one we're taking a look at in this video only has four. Up to 128 GB of storage, but all of the models do support a micro SD card. For the display, it's an 11-inch IPS at 1200 by 2000. It's only 60 Hz. It really has nothing on the Samsung AMOLED displays that are in the new Galaxy tab. But again, we're working with a much lower price tag here, and the IPS display that they chose to use in here looks absolutely amazing. We got quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, and this little thing actually puts out some really good sound, and it's got some bass to it given that these are only tablet speakers. AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.1, it also has GPS built in a 7700 milliamp hour battery, and it's running Android 11. And when it comes to the version of Android that Lenovo's been using on their newer tablets, it's a really clean version. There's only a couple pre-installed apps from Lenovo, like the Kidspace app, I think uh, their Tips app, which actually comes in handy if you've never used one of these before, and Amazon Music. So other than the pre-installed Google apps, it's actually a pretty clean version of Android. Sometimes when you pick up these mid-range devices, you'll see a bunch of solitary apps and go fishing apps pre-installed. Here, it's really clean, and I've been enjoying these newer versions of Android that Lenovo's been putting on their tablets. So the first thing I think of when I see this tablet is a media consumption device. Really, when it comes down to it, we got quad speakers built in, a beautiful IPS 11-inch display, and uh, the main thing you really need to look for when you're picking up a tablet, if you want to do some video playback on it from your favorite apps, is the Widevine version. If you're not familiar with Widevine, basically it's DRM for HD content. So if the device you're using isn't Widevine certified, you're not going to get HD content from Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu, and sometimes with older versions of Android, even YouTube. So I use an application called DRM Info just to check that. And we have L1, which is level one, the highest Widevine that we can get. So yes, we will be able to get HD content and all of our favorite streaming apps on this device. So we know it's Widevine certified, and if we can stream YouTube very well at, let's say, 1440p or even 4K, we're not going to have any issues with any other streaming apps. So let's check this out. I do have Stats for Nerds on screen. We're going to go to 4K with this. I know it's a bit hard to see, but uh, with 4K video content from YouTube, I'm getting zero drop frames. So when it comes to 720, 1080, 1440, and even 4K, even though we don't have the screen to run 4K very well, the chip they're using in this device can handle it very well. And like I mentioned, these speakers sound absolutely amazing. They do have a lot of bass to them. They're not as good as the ones in, let's say, the new iPad Pro, but it's definitely on par with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, which can still be a very expensive Android tablet if you don't pick it up refurbished or used. So as a media consumption device, this is going to work out really well. We got an 11-inch IPS display, quad speakers, and Widevine Level 1. Another cool feature that Lenovo's been adding to their larger tablets is productivity mode. Once you enable it, basically it optimizes this tablet for portrait mode, multitasking, and kind of optimizes it to use a keyboard and mouse with. 
It's sort of like an Android desktop mode, but it's it's definitely not as good as Samsung DeX is. That's actually one of my favorite Android desktops. But what we get here is more flexible multitasking, and it does make it a lot easier to use a keyboard and mouse with it. Most newer apps do support freeform windows, and it can actually force some apps that never supported it to use it. But then resizing that app does get a bit awkward, but most of the Google apps, and like I mentioned, a lot of updated apps will support it. Right here, I have an N64 emulator running right beside Google Play, and you can actually make these bigger or smaller. It's really up to you. I really do wish they would have added HDMI over USB Type-C on this device. So the next thing I wanted to do was run some benchmarks, and first up we have Geekbench 5. On the left-hand side, we have the Lenovo P11 Plus, the tablet we're reviewing in this video. And on the right-hand side, we have the Samsung Tab S7 Plus, which is a much more expensive tablet. On the 11 Plus, single core, 498, multi, 1548. Moving over to a GPU benchmark, this is 3D Mark Wildlife. On the P11 Plus, 1322. And finally, we have Antutu, coming in with a total score on the P11 Plus of 283,183. Obviously, the S7 Plus is going to beat this out. It's got a better CPU, and it's a higher-end tablet. But when it comes to these tablets around the price point of the P11 Plus, the scores here aren't looking bad at all. Now it's time to move over to some native Android gaming. First up, Minecraft. I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, and going into this one, I didn't have any doubts that I wouldn't play this. We're at 14 chunks, fancy graphics is on, and if you wanted to do Minecraft on this, it'll run it all day long. Moving over to Call of Duty Mobile, and again, I'm using that Xbox One controller. We do have controller support with this game. Medium settings, frame rate set to high. I'm getting great performance on the P11+. Plus. This MediaTek G90T actually does a great job, even if you wanted to go with something like PUBG. And most of the stuff from Google Play, even the 3D games, will be fully playable on this device here. Some of the higher-end stuff you might have to drop down to low, like Genshin Impact. But I was actually surprised at how well it ran. So this is at 30 FPS, low settings. We still have one more setting we can go down to, which is lowest. I also tried this with the 60 FPS preset, but unfortunately we just don't have enough power to push this at 60, even on the lowest. But at 30 low, it's actually really playable. Alright, so now it's time for a little bit of emulation. We're going to start off light here with N64. I'm using the standalone version of Moopin64 Plus from the Google Play Store. You could also use RetroArch if you want to. And right now I'm at 800 by 600 but a lot of the stuff can actually go up a little higher. We can upscale these N64 games on the P11+. Plus. Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator works really well on this tablet. I'm actually at 1080p right now, well as close as we can get to 1080p with this resolution, but uh, overall we're getting great performance with Dreamcast, and basically as long as the game's compatible with the ReDream emulator, it's going to play it at full speed. Taking it up to PSP, using the standalone version of PPSSPP, we have Gran Turismo, 3x resolution, Vulcan back in, I could probably go up to 4 with this game here, FPS is up in the top right hand corner, I know it's hard to see, but we are at 60. It's running these PSP games really well, even the harder to run games like Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta. Now with this one, instead of 3x resolution, I did have to drop it down to 2x just to get a more steady frame rate out of it. It was actually handling 3x pretty well, but we did have some dips, so I figured that Vulcan back in at 2x still looks great here, and it's running fine. When it comes to the MediaTek G90T, it's not the most powerful CPU on the market, but there are some GameCube games that will run at full speed. I'm using the Dolphin Emulator. This is not the one from Google Play. You can head over to the official Dolphin Emulator website and download their latest development build. But as you can see, Soul Calibur 2 is running at full speed, and when it comes to games like Wind Waker, you're going to get great performance. But don't expect this to run something like F-Zero at full speed. It's just not going to do it. But this tablet here can emulate the easier to run GameCube games at full speed. So in the end, the Lenovo P11 Plus is actually a great mid-range tablet. If you were to go with something like the new Amazon Fire 10 HD Plus, 
This is $100 more, given that that's $150 for the Plus version, but personally, if I had that extra cash to spend, I would definitely go with this one over the Fire Plus. We just got way better performance out of the CPU-GPU combo. I like the screen on this a lot better. We do have better sound with that quad speaker setup, and to have Android pre-installed with Google Play, at least a nice version of Android 11 like we have here, is totally worth it in my opinion. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I really do think that this is a great mid-range tablet. If you're interested in picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. If you want to see anything else running on this thing, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.